Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of my crypto gaming journey and today I'm going to cover Big Time which has launched early access yesterday for Gold Pass owners. I have been waiting for this moment ever since I bought my Gold Pass and I can say my expectations have been blown away. Starting with the launch process which was extremely smooth, the game is truly a masterpiece and I think it will set the standard for blockchain gaming in general and MMORPGs in particular. But don't take my word for it, stick till the end of the video and see for yourselves. You'll see me referencing World of Warcraft quite a bit as it is my all time favorite game, but the combat style resembles Guild Wars as player positioning impacts abilities. In addition, attacks can be comboed together or modified through jumping or running. For example, attacking while jumping with a greatsword triggers a smash attack and attacking while running causes a whirlwind-like spinning attack that damages all enemies in its radius. There are four classes filling the classic roles of MMORPGs, Time Warriors, Quantum Fixers, Chronomancers and Shadow Blades. Quantum Fixer has healing abilities, Chronomancer is a caster class resembling a Fire Mage and Shadow Blade is reminiscent of rogues being agile and receiving a damage bonus when attacking from the back. I chose the warrior as I love tanking in World of Warcraft and past experiences such as Diablo 3 have proven that melee hack and slash is usually the easiest way to level in new environments with low gear supplies. Each class has its own skill tree with tired abilities which can be unlocked by spending points in certain talents. There are 6 player stats in the game and each level gained allows you to allocate 2 stat points and 1 skill point. Those stats are Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Vitality, Wisdom and Agility. All classes have a health and energy point system required to fuel abilities. An interesting feature is the fluid class system which allows players to switch between different characters, no matter their class, using a pocket watch. Pocket watches drop from dungeons and they have a chance of rolling different affixes which increase stats very similar to World of Warcraft. Apart from this, pocket watches may unlock talent subtrees which players can spec into, getting access to different abilities. One particular feature is that pocket watches also have one or more slots which can be equipped with watch gears, further increasing stats or adding different skill trees. Characters share the same inventory so you can equip gear instantly. You start off in Watertown, an initial hub with vendors, and as you wander outwards in the rustling forest you will find level 1 critters that can be one shot for some experience, as well as ore vines that can be mined yielding both resources and experience. Environment is open world, but swimming in neutral zones instantly kills you, pretty much the same as in Elden Ring. On the other hand, falling does not deal damage, but it is an aspect that can easily be introduced in the game if needed. Scattered across the map, there are different portals which grant access to parties of up to 6 members to dungeons with a higher mob density, most of them being elites which yield higher experience and also drop better loot. I decided to try to solo my first dungeon to see how difficult that might be and to also find a higher density of mobs. Even though I was still level 1, I decided to enter a dungeon where enemies could go as high as level 9, an insectoid seashore cave. Even if the first couple of mobs were easily defeated, I still had to take plenty of breaks to recover my health and energy. Getting to level 2 made things a bit easier as I had access to Barbarian Shout, an ability that damages and stuns all enemies in its radius. Progressing through the dungeon was a whole different story as enemies became way more powerful and I had to use a combination of kiting and pathing in order to stand a chance. Game physics is fluent and crisp, combat is very dynamic which might seem a bit chaotic at first when playing in a group with others, but it is only a matter of getting used to different visual effects. Moreover, sound effects complement abilities and interactions superbly, enriching the overall experience. <laughs> I managed to get all the way up to the final boss where I discovered a very important aspect of the game design. Even though I kited him around until my barbarian shot came off cooldown, at one point I positioned poorly and I got trapped between a wall and the boss. I don't believe it was a bug because characters do collide into each other, even friendly ones. 
I believe this aspect might change once more characters start playing the game in order to avoid crowding major hubs, but this is only my theory. Another important aspect is that if your entire party dies in a dungeon, you must start over. I decided to form a group and ended up playing a couple more dungeons which allowed me to get to almost level 12 quickly while also looting 3 pieces of cosmetic NFTs for two-handed weapons. <laughs> Space NFTs also have a chance of dropping as well as title NFTs which players can display next to their names. These NFTs can be traded directly on Big Time's marketplace and they are purely cosmetic items in order to avoid pay to win tactics. Space NFTs will play an extremely important role as they will be required to build an hourglass which will enable players to loot game tokens when they will go live. While in a group, loot dropped separately for each member so ninja looting was excluded from the start. Higher level dungeons drop better loot and it was extremely fun getting to see additional stats on my gear. One of the key elements of a good MMORPG is itemization and the feeling of progression and big time checks both boxes. Leveling also follows a nice curve, higher levels requiring exponentially more experience. Item design follows the classic rarity system with higher tiered items granting bonus stats as well. In order to enable the fluid class system design, items are not class bound but rather gated by stat requirements. For example, pure warrior items require a higher amount of strength to be wielded, whereas shadow blade specific items require more dexterity in order to be equipped. MMORPGs are my favorite game genre as they offer endless possibilities of development by adding new classes, abilities or end game content. Big Time is no exception and even in this early access phase it proves to be a true AAA title with a strong foundation which can be easily expanded. At the moment the main focus of the game is running dungeons and my goal is to get better gear and level in order to be prepared for future content unlocks. I can't wait to try out the other 3 classes as well and I will share my impressions with all of you. As usual, if you found this content helpful make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.